like to welcome Ms. Uh, Lacey Fonts. She is the coordinator for dual enrollment in Northern Virginia Community College, and she will be doing tonight's presentation. Good evening, and thank you all so much for being here tonight. I'm happy to be able to present this information. So we're going to dive right in. Okay, so again, tonight we're here to talk about dual enrollment. Uh, we are going to be talking about dual enrollment in two ways tonight. So I want to establish a few things uh, to help with understanding. Um, so at Northern Virginia Community College, we offer four types of dual enrollment uh, within our office. Uh, and the one that we're going to start with tonight is going to be the type that we like to uh, refer to as the ultimate double dip. Um, it is what we call concurrent enrollment, where you are taking classes in your high school and earning college credit with those classes. Um, so as you see here on the screen, there are a, a couple of options that we're gonna talk about, but we're gonna start with that one in particular and then build from there. So first things first, I wanna talk about contract dual enrollment. Contract dual enrollment is the opportunity for your students to take classes within the walls of their high school. In doing so, they are able to take classes that allow them to earn both high school credit and college credit. So it's a great two for one deal, if you will. Um, these courses are offered during the high school's regular academic year uh, in the fall and spring semester. And they are open to juniors, seniors, and exceptional underclassmen. And best of all, they are free. So, um, you know, as you see here, when it comes to taking these contract dual enrollment classes, you are saving at least $500 in tuition alone when you're taking these classes at the high school, um, which as we know, college is an investment. So it's a great opportunity from that perspective. Within Prince William County, we offer both what we refer to as transfer classes and CTE or non-transfer classes within your high schools. Uh, some examples are listed under each, and what we refer to when we explain transfer and CTE classes, uh, transfer classes are the courses that are going to work towards a student who is uh, leaning towards earning a bachelor's degree. So these are more what we refer to as your general education courses, your English composition, your sciences, your maths, your histories. Those are courses that you'll be able to build on if you're working towards a bachelor's degree. The courses we refer to as CTE or non-transfer are courses that you are seeing here, such as entrepreneurship, web design, early childhood education. These are courses that typically work towards earning a certificate or an associate's degree that will allow someone to work on building into going to the workforce rather than growing into earning a bachelor's degree. Um, so again, each high school may have some different classes, um, but these are the types of classes you may see at your high school that could be available to you. Now, let's talk a little bit about what this actually looks like. So as I mentioned, these are courses that you can take at your high school. Uh, you'll be taking one class that will be, uh, that will count towards the high school transcript and the college transcript. So a little background on myself, I come from college advising. Um, I worked with a lot of first year students for many years. And one of the most common questions I received was, why do I have to take this again? I just took this. Well, that is one of the benefits with dual enrollment, because as I mentioned a moment ago, some of those classes, English composition, pre-calculus, U.S. history, you could take those as a dual enrollment student and then bypass those when you enroll in college after you graduate from high school. Uh, so it helps you to avoid the duplication of coursework. Um, if you don't take them, it's a very strong chance you're going to enroll in college and revisit that information, which great, you have a good foundation because you already learned some of those details in high school. But if you can save time and money by uh, front loading that, then that's even better. Um, as I mentioned briefly, uh, it does lower the cost of post-secondary education. So right now, based on Nova's tuition, um, a credit is 190 or so dollars for an in-state student. So if you take some classes through dual enrollment that are within your high school, those contract classes, those are completely free to you. You're not paying for tuition, you're not paying for books, you're not paying fees or any of those things. So if you can take some courses now, that is gonna reduce the cost for you to work towards that certificate or degree that you're interested in in the long run. Uh, the other thing I like to mention is, you know, there are a variety of ways 
for students to work towards earning college credit. Um, but when it comes to thinking about whether or not dual enrollment is right for you, it's important to think about how the courses are structured. So with dual enrollment classes, I'll use English as an example, um, you know, the class you are going to essentially roll in, enroll in will be, you know, potentially discussion boards that you're working on, uh, essays, you know, research papers, um, you know, let's say maybe there's a quiz, some tests, whatnot, but there's several times that you're able to um, take an assessment and work towards building that grade, um, which at the end of the year, you'll have a grade that will be posted to your NOVA transcript, as well as a grade that's going to be posted, obviously, to your high school transcript, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But unlike some of the opportunities available, they're not structured to a test. So if you find that test taking is maybe not your strength and you know you don't wanna go that route, know that with dual enrollment classes, there are a variety of ways to earn that credit by working towards a grade at the end of the year through several assessments, okay? Um, and last but not least, I like to just discuss the, the point of it being a seamless transition. Um, so, you know, a lot of times for students who have not taken any, uh, excuse me, college classes, uh, when they walk onto a college campus after they graduate high school, it can be a little intimidating. It's a little bit of a shock factor, you know, hey, I'm diving right into college. Whereas if you take some dual enrollment classes, it can help you ease into the process. Um, you will be, you know, working with instructors who are credentialed through the college, um, there's going to be a different level of requirements that you'll need to meet, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, but it helps you work on learning about your deadlines and policies and procedures and sort of easing in from the academic side. Um, but also you will have access to support resources, not only the academic resources, but if you want to uh, come in and have a little fun at the college and join some activities, that will be uh, available to you too as a dual enrollment student. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about, about what I like to refer to as the dual and dual enrollment. Um, so I mentioned that there are grades for the high school and the college. So it is important to note when you're thinking about taking a dual enrollment class that there will be two grade books, okay? Those grade books are going to be one for the high school grade and one for the college grade. The reason for that is because there are different policies that we follow uh, under, you know, for certain information. So, for example, uh, each time that you take a dual enrollment class or a college class, just in general, you will be provided a syllabus that outlines the policies and procedures, your assignments, the grading, the rubrics potentially, um, and again, just very important details to essentially help you learn how to succeed in that class. So it's it's basically gonna tell you, this is how you can do this or earn this grade. Okay, so um, again, as I mentioned, there's gonna be some different policies. So with NOVA, uh, we believe in zeros. So if you don't do the work, you will get a zero. Um, your instructor is going to include in their syllabus uh, their late policy. So they have the choice to determine whether or not um, you can submit late work and receive a grade for it, or whether you uh, cannot submit late work. So that is something that's a little bit different. So it is very possible for you to earn a different grade in the college and the high school for your dual enrollment class, if you are not aware of or following some of those policies. So again, I say that because I'm a very upfront person. I want you to be aware of these things um, and know how to prepare to be successful in these dual enrollment classes. Um, again, back to grades, um, your transcripts are official. So I always like to tell students that if you're ready to take a dual enrollment class, when you walk into that class, you need to put on that I am a college student cap and know that you are building um, starting and or building your college transcript. And that transcript is going to follow you wherever you go after high school. So whether you continue to earn a degree at NOVA or you go on to a different four-year school, then that is something that will go with you. So you just want to keep that in mind as well, that you'll do the best you can because you're building that transcript. Um, there are deadlines that will be met. So back to your contract classes, as I mentioned, they are within the walls of your high school. They do follow the schedule of the fall and spring semester at your high school. But there are also deadlines that the college is going to set, which again will be in your syllabus. And these are going to explain when you are able to drop the course if you find that it's not working out or you've changed your mind. 
and when you were able to withdraw from the course. So these are very important dates. Again, they will be outlined on your syllabus so that you know when you can essentially remove yourself from that class. Now a drop is going to refer to um, removing yourself from the class completely and the course is erased from your transcript. A withdraw is going to be an opportunity later in the semester. Um, let's say you gave it your, you know, your best effort, but it's just not working out. You can choose to withdraw by the given deadline to save your GPA from, you know, earning whatever grade might be coming, uh, but it will show on your transcript and it will uh, permanently reflect that you attempted that course, okay? Um, we're also gonna talk about a registration deadline shortly, so I'll skip that one now. Um, and then again, assignment due dates. Your instructor will outline all of that in your syllabus, and it is up to you to make sure that you're following those policies if they do not accept late work so that you know what grade you may be getting based on that, okay? Um, another thing that's important to know is that um, at Nova, we have a MyNova, which is your student account. There's no parent Nova. Uh, we do not have a student view and a parent view like you guys do in Prince William. So it's really important that you are prepared to advocate for yourself um, when it comes to questions you have or conversations with your instructors, because your parent will not have access to look at your account. Your parent should not be the one reaching out to us. Um, instead, they can help coach you, but it is going to be important that you are the one having those conversations um, and advocating for yourself. So if it's not something that you're ready to do right now, we want you to gear up and get that, that, that build that skill um, to be prepared for it. Okay. And the last thing that I want to touch base on, which we'll, we'll skip in just a moment to some more details, is just the use of accommodations. So when it comes to accommodations, we are more than happy to support you with uh, seeking out accommodations at the college. Um, what's important to know is that your accommodations that are provided at the high school will not necessarily be the same accommodations that are provided to you at the college. Um, you would need to apply to NOVA through our Office of Accommodations and Accessibility to gain uh, access to one of our accommodations and accessibility counselors and talk through what might be available to you. They will work with you to put together an MOA or a memorandum of understanding, and that will be what uh, identifies the accommodations that you qualify for at the college level, okay? So it's important that if you are seeking accommodations for your dual enrollment classes, that you start that process early, which you'll see here, uh, it starts online on our website. Um, but again, you would start that process early because the accommodations are not retroactive. Now, what that means is let's say you start taking a dual enrollment class at your high school this fall semester and the class starts, we'll say August 20th. Forgive me, I don't know the exact date your classes start right now, um, but let's say it starts August 20th. If you have not worked with our accommodations office to establish that MOA, then you would not be able to start using accommodations towards the college grade in your dual enrollment class. Instead, it would only be uh, accessible once that is established with our office, okay? So if you don't work with them and get that knocked out until September, then the accommodations you have in the high school would only apply to the high school grade and you would not have accommodations for the college side of the dual enrollment grade until that is established. So it's really important to make sure that you're working ahead of time and you're organized with getting that information in and prepared with the accommodations and accessibility office. Okay. Um, the last one I want to just point out is that accommodations do not fundamentally uh, alter the curriculum or the assignment. Rather, they're there to uh, help provide support. So just something that's a little bit different between um, the high school accommodations and the college accommodations. All right. So now that I've given you sort of an overview of the information when it comes to um, being interested maybe in the contract dual enrollment classes, I want to talk a little bit about who is eligible to take these classes. Okay. So we are looking at high school, homeschool juniors and seniors. Um, and again, as I mentioned, exceptional freshmen and sophomore students. Uh, we are looking to make sure that you have proof of English and math college readiness for all classes. Now math may not apply for all classes, just depends on the course. Uh, and that you must meet all pre and co-requisites, which will be outlined. Your uh, high school counselors can speak with you about those, uh, what those would be. Um, but generally speaking, these are the details that you see here on the screen for transfer courses and the CTE or non-transfer courses, okay? So we would start with the high school transcript. The easiest thing we find is that if we look at your transcript and see what your cumulative GPA is, for those transfer courses, you would need to have at least a 3.0 cumulative GPA. Uh, and the minimum requirement for those CTE courses is a 2.0. 
Now, if you are looking to uh, be considered as an exceptional freshman or sophomore, we would bump those GPAs up by 0.25. So you would need a 3.25 or a 2.25 minimum to meet those criteria if you are not a junior or soft, excuse me, junior or senior. Um, if you do not meet the GPA requirement, no problem. We can look at your PSAT, ACT, or SAT. Um, and those are the scores that are listed there. Um, there aren't any alternates for those. Those would be the minimum scores you would have to provide to us. And if you did not meet any of these scores that you see listed here, then we could look into um, working with you to take our placement test. Now, just so you know, the placement test would be done at one of our NOVA campuses. Um, so you would need to work with us to prepare to uh, take that and plan for that within the right amount of time so that we can confirm your scores and your eligibility. Okay, okay so I'm interested, now what, what do we do? Uh, so step one, as I mentioned, talk to your high school counselors. So because these courses are offered within the walls of your high school, they're the ones who can speak to you about, you know, what grade are you in? What classes might align? Um, what requirements do you still need working towards your um, high school diploma? Uh, so they would be able to talk with you through those details. I can't see any of that information. So while I would love to help you, I'm not the expert on that information for you, unfortunately. Um, so after you speak with them about what classes are available at your high school and what you might need based on where you are uh, working towards your degree, you wanna look at the eligibility criteria, okay? So how do you qualify? Do you need to take the placement test? And then we can build from there. After that, once we've identified that you qualify or that you're working towards that placement test, you would complete our three-step process. Now, I mentioned that there's registration deadlines, so it's important to note that if you are interested in taking a dual enrollment class, uh, contract dual enrollment class within Prince William County this uh, upcoming year, you must complete our three-step process by May 3rd. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so our three-step process. First and foremost, you need to apply to Northern Virginia Community College, okay? You must apply. And after completing the application, you will receive your MPLID. Um, that is also known as your Nova Student ID number, but we call it the MPLID, so just expect to hear that. Uh, and your MyNova username. Once you have those details and an active application with the college, you are then going to create a dual enroll student account. Now, just for clarity, these accounts do not talk to each other. Um, so you've got to do one to do the other to complete the process, not out of any, uh, excuse me, in any other order. Um, so you will need your template to create your dual enroll account. Um, as you're creating your dual enroll account, there are two pieces of information that are really important that you put in there. One being your high school counselor, because your high school counselor will receive requests on your behalf as well as your parent or legal guardian, because they will also receive requests because we can't put you in any classes as a dual enrollment student unless we have parent or legal guardian permission. So it's really important that when you're putting that information in, you're sure that it's correct. Um, the parent legal guardian information, they ask for a phone number and or an email address. So please make sure that when you include those numbers or email addresses that you double check them so that we're not texting or emailing some very random folks uh, on your behalf to see if you can take classes. <laughs> so please make sure that you're double checking those details. All right, and then last but not least, once you've applied to NOVA, you have created your account uh, in dual enroll, you will then select the courses that you're interested in being considered for for the upcoming academic year, okay? Um, again, the courses that are available are gonna depend on you know what year you are, what school you're at, so it's most important that you talk to your high school counselor, get details. And again, in order to be considered, you have to complete all three of these steps no later than Friday, May 3rd. I ask that you do it sooner than later, um, but Friday, May 3rd will be the cutoff. Okay, now that I've given you all of those details, we're gonna switch gears for just a moment. And I want to talk to you about what it looks like to leverage those credits and other opportunities to earn credit. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the quick version of this. Um, if you need something to help you sleep, you can Google these and read them. And I promise you, you'll be snoozing in no time. Um, but the short version of what you're looking at here is that we want you to have opportunities to earn credentials and be successful, uh, working towards uh, your goals, um, basically before you graduate high school. So we want to provide opportunities. So, 
there's a, uh, as you see here, it's a law. Um, so in 2012, it was established that basically we are going to work together to create opportunities for you, um, specifically with regard to earning dual enrollment credit and a certificate or associate's degree. Uh, and then we worked because one of the biggest questions we get is, will my credits transfer? Will they be accepted? There's work that's been done where you see here the general education transfer credit agreement to make sure that that is possible for you. Okay, so all of that said, there are opportunities that were created called the UCGS and Passport. UCGS stands for the Uniform Certificate of General Studies and Passport is Passport. Uh, so basically what we're looking to do is uh, create these opportunities for you to earn. Um, the UCGS, as I mentioned, is a certificate. The Passport is not. Uh, but these are ways for you to maximize credit acceptance. Now, these are specific to public schools in the state of Virginia, uh, but the courses that you would take within these are going to be transferable so long as you earn a C or better, and they will satisfy lower level general education courses. Okay. So again, back to my advising days, will these classes transfer? Am I going to lose credit? If you work towards earning these, the answer is yes. Now, that being said, it does not guarantee you admission into the college, but it does guarantee that if you are accepted, then these credits would be uh, accepted as well. So I want to talk about the Uniform Certificate of Studies, um, excuse me, of General Studies, because the passport fits right into this. So it's easier to just kind of say, you know, those are a couple of things that would fit. But when you look at the Uniform Certificate of General Studies, it might look like a lot, but the reality is this is 11 classes. Okay. And in your case, depending on which dual enrollment classes you take, it may not even be 11 classes. So for example, you see here that we have English composition one and English composition two. While this is two classes, if you were to take this class at your high school as a contract dual enrollment, you're taking one year of English to earn these six credits. So both classes. So again, it looks a little more than, you know, more busy, um, but it's 11 classes that can be done, uh, you know, with some of these via the contract dual enrollment opportunities, um, and it actually reduces the time and effort you need. So let's continue that chat. So I mentioned a little bit about being able to transfer your classes. So I do want to just mention that with or without earning a certificate or an associate's degree, the dual enrollment classes typically do transfer to most Virginia colleges and universities and to some out-of-state schools. I say some simply because it is important that wherever it is that you want to enroll at after you graduate from high school, that you do some research and look at their school information to find out what their policy is. Um, oftentimes, information will be on their admissions website about how they consider dual enrollment credit. Um, so I can't say every school is going to take your credits. It is most important that you do that research and take a look um, to see what each school's policy is. Okay. Um, please note that sometimes credits, uh, if you are transferring individual credits rather than a package deal like a certificate, um, they may be uh, excuse me, picky about how they accept them depending on your major. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. And then a common practice is to provide official confirmation only once you have been accepted at that institution. So oftentimes there's general information on websites that's important for you to look at and have an idea, but just be prepared. And you can expect that most schools are not going to give you official confirmation of how credits will be accepted unless you are accepted to their institution. Okay, so I mentioned that there are some other opportunities for you to earn dual enrollment credit. Now, this is where I want to shift gears and have you look at dual enrollment in a different light, okay? So all of the classes we've talked about up until this point are classes that you're taking within the walls of your high school and that are going to apply towards both your high school transcript and your college transcript. So I want you to leave that behind. We're gonna set that aside for a moment and we're gonna talk about opportunities to earn college credit as a high school student, okay? So the opportunities we're gonna talk about are gonna be just earning college credit, not earning college and high school credit at the same time, okay? So you're still a high school student, but you're just looking at the college credit piece. So early online college, whether you've heard of it or not, we uh, lovingly refer to it as EOC. Um, these are courses that are taken outside of the school day. Um, they are for college credit only, typically. There are some exceptions. You need to talk to your school and find out what they may accept. 
Um, they are available to juniors and seniors only. We do not do uh, underclassmen exception for these courses um, for fall and spring semester only. Um, and they are offered in an online asynchronous format, okay? These courses are tuition free, but you are responsible for books and materials if those are required for the courses. Um, you can take up to two EOC courses each fall and spring semester. The courses that we choose to offer each fall and spring through EOC are courses that apply towards the Uniform Certificate of General Studies or those general education-based classes that are most transferable, most accepted, because what we're trying to do is help you work towards essentially completing that first year of college. So a, a, a bachelor's degree is roughly 120 credits. So if you split that into, we'll go about 60 credits for the associate's degree, that uniform certificate of general studies is roughly 32. So that, if you look at it, can give you basically your first year of college working through those general education courses that everyone is going to be taking working towards a bachelor's degree, okay? So um, if you are interested in being uh, considered for early online college, then you would follow that same three-step process that we talked about a moment ago with apply to NOVA, complete your dual enroll account, select your classes. Um, but just so you know, those dates and deadlines that you need to complete that process vary each year and they are on our website. So I can give you that uh, web, excuse me, give you that website in just a moment, um, but it's gonna follow a similar process. So right now we do not have information up for this upcoming fall, um, but that is gonna be coming out in the next couple of weeks so that you can start looking at what might be available for the fall uh, 2024 EOC options. Okay. okay. Next, we're gonna talk about independent dual enrollment. So independent dual enrollment, again, is typically for college credit only, but uh, it could be for high school credit. Um, independent dual enrollment is available in a couple of uh, variety, excuse me, in a, a few varieties. So you can take it on campus, you can take it online, you can take it asynchronous, Zoom, whatever the case may be during fall, spring and summer. And it is available to junior, seniors and underclassmen. Now, this is an opportunity to earn credit, but it does require that you pay tuition, textbooks, materials. The, the cost is definitely on, on the student and parent for this one. Um, but this is a way that if a student is looking to earn additional credit or work towards a credential, and it's not something that's available through one of uh, through your high school or one of our other programs, you have the ability to still take classes with us. It's just, again, it's, it's up to you to pay the, the cost for those. Um, we do have support available if you want to talk with us about this opportunity um, and work with us to kind of see what you are um, uh, what credentials you might be working towards or what goals, um, we can talk with you and set up an appointment to make sense of what classes you might need. With independent dual enrollment, um, to pursue it, there is a packet that you will complete um, that you'll fill out with your parent or legal guardian and your high school counselor uh, and provide your uh, eligibility criteria. So the eligibility criteria are going to be the same as the ones I mentioned for contract. Uh, and so you would fill out this paperwork, um, which again is all on our website. Okay, finally, we're going to talk about Jumpstart to Nova. Now, Jumpstart to Nova is available um, each year depending on funding. So let me make that clear. Um, it is going to be available this summer, though. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware of it. So Jumpstart to Nova is an opportunity available to students who are graduating seniors. So you'll be graduating this June and coming to Nova in the fall. So if you're graduating from high school in June and you're coming to Nova in August, then you could consider taking advantage of our Jumpstart to NOVA program. So again, this is gonna be college credit only. These classes are going to be online, asynchronous classes, um, available to uh, graduating seniors who are coming to NOVA, uh, and it is tuition free, but you will need to buy textbooks and materials if they are required for the classes. Now, you can take up to two classes through Jumpstart to NOVA, and that would be um, one three or four credit class from our approved list. Um, again, we are looking at those gen eds, those uniform certificate of general studies type of classes uh, and one class, excuse me, or one credit intro to college class is the best way to explain it. It's called student development. Uh, so it would be that course plus one of the uh, options you can select from. And it would also require that three-step registration process. So apply to NOVA, 
do your dual enroll account and select the classes. Um, again, these dates and deadlines will be coming up. Uh, Jumpstart to Nova is not on our website yet. Um, it's not quite posted, but it will be coming up in the next couple of weeks again. Um, so the best thing to do with each of these opportunities that are going to be coming up is to keep an eye on our website. We will be pushing information out to Prince William to share out with you. Um, but if you just keep an eye on our dual enrollment website, then you'll see those updates as well. All right, so I'm a visual person, so I made this chart in case it would help. Uh, so basically what you have here is outside of the contract dual enrollment classes, which are in your high school. And again, you want to talk to your high school counselors. Um, you can see you're able to see here the uh, opportunities to take advantage of up to eight classes through early online college between your junior and senior year. If you want to take additional classes, you can look into independent dual enrollment year round. And then after you graduate, you could consider doing Jumpstart to Nova if you're coming to uh, Nova. So great opportunity um, on top of those contract classes available to you in your high school to work towards earning college credit. Um, again, I emphasize you do not have to earn a credential or a certificate or an associate's degree before you graduate from high school, but there are opportunities to look into that if you are interested. Uh, so let's talk about just a couple more uh, resources and then we can open it up for some questions. Um, but again, I always want to make sure that you have information so that you can look into more detail. Uh, so a couple of self-help resources. If you are interested in looking at a major or working towards a certificate, um, you can look at our college catalog. We have a new one each year that will show you what degrees we offer um, and what is required to earn that degree. So if you are looking at taking some classes and you know that you want to go, I'm just going to use mine, you want to go to VCU and you want to study criminal justice, then you can look at some of the ways that we could help you do that and some of the classes that might be useful to you. Um, if you are a student who is taking dual enrollment classes um, and you're also taking AP classes or IB classes or something that might give you credit, um, we have what is called the Credit for Prior Learning Manual. Again, that's a new document each year as different uh, information comes out. Um, but if you have AP or IB scores and you want to know what you might get for those at NOVA, the Credit for Prior Learning Manual is going to explain what your score might equate to. Now, Disclaimer, again, the advisor and me can't help it. If you look and you see that it gives you credit for something, do not assume that it is something you need. Write it down and then talk with us about whether or not that's something that would be useful to you and your long-term goals. Um, so just make sure that you're you know, keeping track of that, but know that you need to have a bigger conversation. Uh, and then transcripts. Um, so each time you take a dual enrollment class, again, your transcript will be updated with that course. Uh, so if you need to view your unofficial transcript, you're able to do that. There's information on the link here, instructions for accessing that. If you need to order your official transcript to send it somewhere else, um, it's also available here. And then the last one I want to point out is that, again, my name is Lacey Fonts, and I am a dual enrollment coordinator at the college, uh, and I work primarily with Prince William and Manassas. Um, so if you have questions about earning a credential, um, I am happy to set up a meeting with you. Um, I would ask that it's only specific to working towards a degree. Um, if you want to talk about taking those classes just directly in your high school, please talk to your high school counselor first, because again, they can speak to where you are, what grade you're in, what's available to you. Um, but if you have bigger questions about working towards uh, a credential, please let me know. All right. And there we are. I think I was able to keep a good 20 or so minutes in here for questions. So hopefully I was able to provide some good detail on the different opportunities, but please let me know what kind of questions we have so I can clarify anything you might need. I have a question. Hello? Yes. Uh, I have a question. My son is junior at, his, and, uh, at Garsfield High School. But we received an email uh, from the Prince William County about about the, uh, the dual enrollment program. If when we, uh, we went to the Nova College, they don't accept my son because we are refugee and we don't have green card. And I was very sad. Why? Because he's very smart. Sure. So 
so sorry, let me just make sure I understand. So he's looking to take dual enrollment classes. Yes, but Garfield? we don't have great card. We don't have great card because we're refugee. And okay. they said you are uh, out out uh, of the state, not inside inside the state. And uh, the, we said no, we are here. We have been living in Virginia uh, almost three years ago. So, as a dual enrollment student, if you're taking classes at Garfield as a dual enrollment student, you shouldn't be qualified as an out of state student. There's an in state exception made while the student is dual enrollment. So I'm not sure. I, let's definitely touch base on that because you shouldn't qualify that way. Now, if he can, if he decides to continue at Nova after he graduates from high school, then there would be the conversation of the residency status. Um, but students who are taking contract dual enrollment classes are provided that in-state exception. No, oh, okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Yeah, I did have some questions that um, I'm going to go over as people were posting them in the chat. Um, okay. I know Kelly did a great job answering uh, quite a few of them. One of them is, will all dual enrollment classes transfer as one-on-one, -on -one, or could some transfer in as elective at a Virginia school? So, great question. Um, if you take them as a bundle, so like, let's say if you earn the Uniform Certificate of General Studies, they will transfer in as a bundle. Um, but if you take classes individually without earning a credential or earning a certificate, then uh, each school can decide how those courses are accepted. So most Virginia public institutions have information on their website about how those courses could be accepted. Um, but you are oftentimes given a little more if you go in with a, a certificate first. One of the other questions that was asked, it says the non-credit transfer classes, like, uh, for example, welding, are those only for specific high schools? So, yes. So the welding program is only offered at one of the high schools. Um, and I would like to maybe ask Kelly Brown to speak to that because um, when it comes to yes. the specialty programs, I believe those are decided yes. outside of my control. <laughs> So courses like welding, where it's attached to a specialty program, students are able to apply for that particular specialty program and would transfer to the school in order to complete that course sequence. Um, it is not a situation where a student can take some classes at their base school and then go over for welding. That is one of the what we call a transfer program that students can apply to through the specialty program process. One of the other questions that was asked, I think it's specific to the Jumpstart program. It said, um, the parent said, it used to be free for all students. And she just wanted uh, to clarify, uh, because you said, um, did you say it's only free for students attending NOVA after graduation? Yes, that's correct. So the first year that the program was offered, it was open to all students. It has since changed and it is focused on students that are coming directly to NOVA instead. Another question asked, and I believe maybe Kelly may have answered it, do EOC transfer out of state? So they could, absolutely. So it's always important for uh, students that are interested in transferring out of state to look at the schools that they're interested in, um, because each school may have their own DE acceptance policy. Um, we do know there are quite a few students who have transferred out of state and those classes have been accepted, um, but there are cases we've seen where they are not. So it's really important to check in with the schools you're interested in. Can I ask a quick question? <clears throat> Certainly. I don't know if you mentioned it earlier in the program, but can you, um, like what are the pros and cons or compare um, there's other programs, high school programs that offer college um, credit, such as IB or the TJ or the one that's at Osborne. Mm -hmm. What's the pros and cons uh, or the usual of each going one route or the other? I'm not sure. 
I Kelly Brown question. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was watching Lacey waiting for her to say that. Um, so <laughs> each of our advanced academic courses or programs offer different opportunities for different students. Um, and so what we always tell families is we wouldn't offer all four of them. So we wouldn't offer AP, IB, dual enrollment, and Cambridge as a district if we didn't find value in all four of those programs. Um, but it's going to depend on your student as to what's a better fit for them. Um, our dual enrollment classes are going to be potentially styled differently. They're going to have different expectations. Um, our AP, IB, and Cambridge courses, those students are going to take a course or take an exam at the end of that course. And that exam is what determines whether they will have the opportunity for college credit or not. Um, so each one is structured in a bit of a different way. Um, so what I encourage families to do is look at the opportunities that are available for your student at their school and look at your particular student. Um, our AP and IB courses, they follow Prince William grading. So we do have, um, we don't have some of the same restrictions that NOVA for dual enrollment courses where zeros or zeros, no late work is accepted. Um, so you really want to look at what the different courses are that are offered and look at your student to see how would that fit best with you. Is the maximum amount of college credit applicable for each? I think IB is a, a program that you get X amount regardless. AP is dependent but in the door of Mormon, depending on how many you, you enroll in. So they all, all, all depend on the accepting university or so we don't we are not able as a, that is determined by whatever school the student will be accepted at. Um, with dual enrollment for within Virginia, we do have, but all of the AP and IB, that's going to be dependent on the accepting university. One of the questions that came up, Lacey, and I think you've already answered it, but it was from another parent, um, is um, if my daughter takes an online course, will she receive college credit? I think it's similar to what you answered a little while ago. Absolutely. So the, the format does not make a difference. Um, the college credit is going to be the same. The other one is, where is the list of dual enrollment courses? Is this independent on their, is this dependent on the high school? It is. So yes. Yeah. So um, across Prince William, there are a good number of classes, but they're not offered consistently at every high school. So it's important to check with your high school to see what is offered. And uh, one of the questions that says, have you changed the way you give credits each year? I heard that the credit for say a history class would only count as a NOVA course for the entire year, as opposed to it used to count as two NOVA courses. No, not at all. So uh, if a student takes DE US history, then they're actually earning credit for two classes. So it would be US history one and US history two, um, which is six credits for the one high school course. Uh, there's also a question for Jumpstart to Nova. Is there a way to take the SDB 101, which is the orientation to teaching, rather than the SDB 100, the college success? Unfortunately, no. Um, we don't have the ability to offer all the variety, so it's the standard SDB course. If anyone has any other questions, you're more than welcome to come off mute or type them in the chat. I don't see any other ones coming in. Are we able to get a copy of your slides? Yes, ma'am. I will do a follow-up email with everyone, all the registrants uh, tomorrow. I will provide the recording as well as the PowerPoint uh, presentation. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. One question did come in. Can someone get a year off of a bachelor's degree doing dual enrollment? Excuse me? Yes, ma'am? Yes. Uh, 
¿Puedo conversar con alguien que eh, domine español, por favor, que hable español? O si me pueden dar algún teléfono, algún correo. Mi hija es nueva en el colegio. No estoy entendiendo muy bien acerca de estos cursos o esta reunión. Tenemos un traductor, pero yo le puedo dar mi información aquí en el chat para que me llame mañana. Si me, me da su, su correo o su teléfono, ¿verdad? Yo le envío mi información aquí directa. Perfecto, gracias. Gracias. Um, so one of the questions uh, was, can someone get a year off of a bachelor's degree uh, doing dual enrollment? Yes, it is definitely possible. Um, so that uniform certificate of general studies is 32 credits. Uh, and that typically is going to cover your first year of what we call your general education coursework. This has been really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Right. It doesn't look like we have any other questions, so I would like to take this time just to thank everyone for joining us tonight. As I said, I will be sending out a PowerPoint presentation as well as a recording um, so that you can have to use as a reference. As Ms. Vaughn said, if you have any additional questions, you're more than welcome to also reach out to your school, your child's school counselor at the school to answer any questions. Um, we will yes, ma'am. Sorry, I didn't want to, well, I did want to interrupt you for a second. We do have one really good question that I want to make sure that Ms. Fonts is able to answer before we sign off. The question is about four-year universities in Virginia and whether they are required to accept students who have earned an associate's degree from NOVA with a 3.0 GPA. I am and not aware of a requirement like that. No. So I know, yeah, and I, what I would say for families that are looking into that, I do believe that there are some admission agreements, mm -hmm. but that's something that you would want to speak with, not necessarily a dual enrollment advisor at NOVA, but a, a traditional student advisor at NOVA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, it sounds like you're thinking about guaranteed admission agreements, but the GPAs for those could be, they vary. Um, and they are dependent on majors. So yes, that sounds like guaranteed admission. Um, and then I know that there are some, I don't want to say guaranteed programs for, you know, graduating high school students, but I, I have heard of some things in the area that are coming up that speak to that. Mm -hmm. Right. So we will be putting our survey link in the chat so that you can please take a few minutes to answer those questions and let us know um, how you like the presentation tonight and also for any future presentations. One of the questions that we did get in the chat, it was about scholarship searches. We do have a session on the 20th of this month. You're more than welcome to go ahead and register for that. Uh, information will be provided. And so again, uh, thank you, Ms. Fons, for joining us tonight with your presentation, to Ms. Kelly Brown for answering questions in the chat. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us and you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. You. Have a nice one. You too. A good one. Yeah. <laughs>